All right, good morning. This is Monday in the fifth week of Lent. This is the Office of Reading. Before we begin, let's add to our prayers those for priests, deacons, and religious, for bishops and the Pope, that they're able to guide the, the faithful in this time of need, and that even though they're saying them quietly, uh, we're grateful for them to still be saying their masses and singing their liturgies for us. Let us pray for world leaders that they're able to work together in peace and harmony to come to an end to this global pandemic. <coughs> Let us uh, offer our prayers for doctors, nurses, lab technicians, and janitors who are working on the front lines to keep us safe. Let us pray for the afflicted that they're granted a quick recovery and for the families of the afflicted that they've persevered in their faith. Let us pray for the countries whose medical systems may find themselves overwhelmed. Let us pray for the conversion of souls of those profiteers who are trying to make money off of the fears and anxieties of others. And on a personal note, if you could pr please pray for Dan and Stephanie Burke, uh, that they make a quick recovery. Uh, they're intimately involved with the Avila Institute, the Divine Instamacy Podcast, and a lot of other great resources on uh, contemplative prayer. Okay, so that being said, let's go ahead and start the Office of Readings for Monday in the fifth week of Lent. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving, and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. The Lord is God, the mighty God, <coughs> the great King over all the gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to him, the dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Come then, let us bow down in worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn like your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Merbia and Massah they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. O God of truth, prepare our minds to hear and heed your word. Fill every heart that longs for you, with your mysterious presence, Lord. Almighty Father, with your Son, and blessed Spirit, hear our prayer. Teach us to love eternal truth, and seek its freedom everywhere. Show me your mercy, Lord, and keep me safe. Show me your mercy, Lord, and keep me safe. Lord, do not reprove me in your anger. Punish me not in your rage. Have mercy on me, Lord, I have no strength. Lord, heal me, my body is racked. My soul is racked with pain. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, Lord, rescue my soul. Save me in your merciful love. For in death no one remembers you. From the grave, you who can give you praise? I am exhausted by my groaning. Every night I drench my pillow with tears. I bedew my bed with weeping. My eyes waste away with grief. I have grown old, surrounded by my foes. 
Leave me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord will accept my prayer. All my foes will retire in confusion, foiled and suddenly confounded. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show me your mercy, Lord, and keep me safe. The poor are not alone in their distress. God is here to help them. The poor are not alone in their distress. God is here to help them. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will recount all your wonders. I will rejoice in you and be glad, and sing psalms to your name, O Most High. See how my enemies turn back, how they stumble and perish before you. You upheld the justice of my cause. You sat enthroned, judging with justice. You have checked the nations, destroyed the wicked. You have wiped out their name for ever and ever. The foe is destroyed, eternally ruined. You uprooted their cities. Their memory has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned for ever. He sets up his throne for judgment. He will judge the world with justice. He will judge the peoples with his truth. For the oppressed, let the Lord be a stronghold, a stronghold in a time of distress. Those who know your name will trust you. You will never forsake those who seek you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The poor are not alone in their distress. God is here to help them. I will be the herald of your praises. Lord, where the people of Zion gather. I will be the herald of your praises, Lord, where the people of Zion gather. Sing psalms to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim his mighty works among the peoples. For the avenger of blood has remembered them, has not forgotten the cry of the poor. Have pity on me, Lord, see my sufferings, you who save me from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praise at the gates of the city of Zion, and rejoice in your saving help. The nations have fallen in the pit which they made, their feet caught in the snare they laid. The Lord has revealed himself and given judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. Let the wicked go down among the dead, all the nations forgetful of God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hopes of the poor be in vain. Arise, Lord, let men not prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Lord, strike them with terror. Let the nations know they are but men. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for ever. Amen. I will be the herald of your praises, Lord, where the people of Zion gather. Turn away from sin, and be faithful to the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. The first reading from the letter to the Hebrews. <clears throat> God did not make the world to come, the world of which we speak, subject to angels. Somewhere this is testified to, in the passage that says, What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned him with the glory and honor and put all things under his feet. In subjecting all things to him, God left nothing unsubjected. At present, we do not see all things thus subject, but we do see Jesus crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death. Jesus, who was made for a little while lower than the angels, that through God's gracious will he might taste death for the sake of all men. Indeed, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory God, for whom and through whom all things exist, should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. 
He who consecrates and those who are consecrated have one in the same Father. Therefore he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will announce your name to my brothers. I will sing your praise in the midst of the assembly. And I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I, the children God has given me. Now, since the children are men of blood and flesh, Jesus likewise had a full share in ours, that by his death he might rob the devil, the prince of death, of his power, and free those who through fear of death had been slaves their whole life long. Surely he did not come to help angels, but rather the children of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers in every way, that he might be merciful and faithful high priest before God on their behalf, to expiate the sins of the people. Since he was himself tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are tempted. Christ who sanctifies men, and the men who are sanctified, are of the same stock. He had to become like his brothers in every respect, in order to be their compassionate and faithful high priest. God was seen on earth, he lived among men, in order to be their compassionate and faithful high priest. The second reading, for the commentary on the Psalms by St. John Fisher, Bishop and Martyr. Our high priest is Christ Jesus. Our sacrifice is his precious body, which he immolated on the altar of the cross for the salvation of all men. The blood that was poured out for our redemption was not of the goats or calves, as in the old law, but that of the most innocent lamb, Christ Jesus our Savior. The temple in which our high priest offered sacrifice was not one made by hands, but built by the power of God alone. For he shed his blood in the sight of the world, a temple fashioned by the hand of God alone. This temple, however, has two parts. The first is the earth which we now inhabit. The second is as yet unknown to us mortals. Christ first offered sacrifice here on earth when he underwent his most bitter death. Then, clothed in the new garment of immortality, with his own blood, he entered into the Holy of Holies, that is, into heaven. There he also displayed before the throne of the Heavenly Father that blood of immeasurable price which he had poured out seven times on behalf of all men subject to sin. This sacrifice is so pleasing and acceptable to God that as soon as he had seen it, he must immediately have pity on us and extend clemency to all who are truly repentant. Moreover, it is eternal. It is offered not only each year, as with the Jews, but also each day of our consolation, and indeed at every hour and every moment as well, so that we may have the strongest reason for comfort. This is why the Apostle adds, He has secured an eternal redemption. All who have embarked on true contrition and penance for the sins they have committed, and are firmly resolved not to commit sins again for the future, but to persevere constantly in the pursuit of virtues which they have now begun, all these became sharers in this holy and eternal sacrifice. St. John sets this before us in these words, My little children, I am writing this to you, so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. And he is the propitiation of our sins, and not only for our sins, but also for those of the whole world. If, when we were his enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, now that we are his friends, we can be even more sure that we shall be saved by the life of his Son. When we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now that we are his friends, we can be even more sure that we shall be saved by the life of his Son. Let us pray. Father of love, source of all blessings, Help us to pass from our old life of sin to the new life of grace. Prepare us for the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord.
and give him thanks.